Do you want to know how City Football Group failed to include Dutch side NAC Breda to their football dynasty? This video will also let you know how Palermo was acquired by the City Football Group after failing to buy NAC Breda. Let me tell you the brief history of City Football Group. The parent company of Manchester City is called City Football Group, or CFG for short, and, according to CFG, it is the owner of football-related businesses in major cities throughout the world, including football teams, academies, technical assistants, and marketing organizations. From September 2008 to December 2015, CFG was fully owned by the Abu Dhabi United Group, an investment firm for the Abu Dhabi royal family that belonged to city owner Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan. CFG currently owns 11 football clubs around the world, with City being the most well-known globally. All of them are strategically acquired as part of their sports washing. A relationship between Manchester City and NAC Breda was first announced in the April of 2016 to allow young players to get experience in a competitive environment. Simon Buczkowski explained City's decision to send more than four players to the Dutch club each season after the relationship was announced. According to Simon, the new plans for the age groups will only worsen the bottleneck that has already been caused by the academy's inability to develop any talent over the past year. NAC has been a fruitful outlet for young City players up to this point. NAC, who added Breda to their name after the City bought the stadium to help the club with its financial difficulties, has helped the team achieve a lot of success on the field. According to worldfootball.net, with more than 500 victories, NAC is the seventh most successful team in the history of the Eredivisie. The Southern Dutch organization was demoted in 2015 due to financial debt and poor management. 2015-16 marked Breda's first non-Eredivisie season, but they had goals beyond simply getting back into the top division. In the early part of that season, a new alliance with Manchester City began to take shape. The powerful, oil-funded English club was joining hand with a financially strapped and ordinarily relaxed Dutch. NAC is a club founded on tenacity. Yet, to adopt the techniques of modern football, a club must swim unusually. Although Man City got into its swimming groove quicker than most, it will take some time for this club to reach parity in terms of finances. The importance of young development has been the sole micro-solution to the issue of financial trailing for teams pushed to the outside of European football, most notably in Holland. How did fans stop the deal between NAC Breda and Manchester City? Since being demoted from the Eredivisie in 2019, NAC has competed in the Erste Divisie, the second division of Dutch football. They have a fervent home following, with several active fan clubs. Three years ago, the team was demoted, yet in their first season back, they still averaged over 17,000 fans at home, so their fan base is really loyal and important for the club's existence. The purchase of NAC by City Football Group for 7 million euros was announced in March. According to the proposed deal, selected City players from Manchester City entered into a loan deal that allows players like Angelino to temporarily relocate to the Netherlands to improve as a player and help NAC Breda with more quality. Between 2016 and 2021, 14 players played for NAC as part of the agreement. NAC appeared to be on the verge of joining the group's expanding portfolio as the 12th club after CFG reached an agreement with the club's shareholders. But this was not accepted among the loyal fan base at NAC Breda. Supporters swiftly objected, wanting to preserve the reputation of their team and in certain cases feeling uneasy about Abu Dhabi and the United Arab Emirates reported human rights violations. Deckers, an editor of Fanzine de Rat, believes that CFG anticipated meeting friendly fans due to a five-year financing agreement they had with them, but it was the exact opposite of that. The takeover wasn't in our club's best interest. Here, there is a significant fan culture. We greatly value the connection between our club, our town, and our supporters. Thus, we didn't want to join a huge worldwide private equity firm. Supporters of NAC started acting right away. Within 30 minutes of the news, 
fan organizations were coordinating and devising strategies to make it crystally clear that they did not want their team to be acquired by CFG. A statement was made public. The specifics of the excursions to Troy, Lamel and Manchester were decided. For the stadium's inside, large banners were ordered to protest during matches. During NAC's following home game, the intensity of feeling regarding the prospective takeover was demonstrated. According to Deckers, usually one group of supporters crafts all banners. That's their job, so no one else has to manufacture any. However, when we got to the stadium for our next game, it was amazing. So many people, including children and the elderly, had shown up with their homemade banners. It was really encouraging to see. They were tablecloths, bedsheets, anything all with unambiguous statements against the takeover. We were surprised by that, but it sent a pretty strong message that we were all in this together. Deckers and the other NAC supporters were certain that they could stand up to the power of CFG. Since a group of shareholders had owned the club since 2011, it was always likely that they might become the target of a takeover offer. However, it was important to note that for four of those shareholders, collectively known as the NOAD Foundation, held golden shares, which gave them the authority to veto any sale of the club. It was obviously clear from the ferocious response to the news that supporters opposed the action, hence Noad was almost certain to veto the agreement. Sure enough, a few weeks after it was announced that a deal had been made with CFG, a statement on NAC's website said the arrangement was off. The bid was rejected, along with two substitute offers, and Noad chose to transfer shares to a group of local business people instead. After intensive discussions with both the City Football Group and two possible alternatives, the NOAD Foundation decided after careful and extensive testing to submit the local plan of NAC Breda, an official Breda statement said. After that, City Football Group held their eyes on the Italian club Palermo. Unione Sportiva Cittadel Palermo, commonly referred to as simply Palermo, has one of the most intriguing club football histories in the present. In their 119-year history, Palermo has never won a meaningful trophy or finished first in the Serie A rankings, but they have five Serie B titles. Palermo has been out of the Italian top division for 30 years before Maurizio Zamperini acquired the team in 2002. With Zamperini in charge, Palermo rose from the Italian second division to Europa League qualifications for the first time in the club's history in just three seasons. Despite his early relative success with the Sicilian club, Zamperini's lasting memory at Palermo would likely be his tense interactions with coaches. In fact, Palermo has had 45 different managers since the investor purchased the team in 2002. However, it must be noted that not all 45 managers during this time have changed, as some head coaches served the club for more than one spell. Unfortunately for Pink and Black's fans, the club's recent engaging narrative has been focused more on its ownership than its on-field performance. According to some news, the City Football Group has engaged in finalising a deal. The group would acquire 80% of shares on the Rosanero Club for a sum close to $6 million. Dario Miri would continue as chairman of the board of Palermo FC and club president. Ferran Soriano, chief executive of City Football Group said, Palermo is a great and historic club with some strong and proud identity. We will work with Dario Miri to continue his outstanding work to grow Palermo sustainably over the years ahead. This is a very special club and our role will be to add value to all the things which make it so special and steadily improve performance both on and off the pitch using our experience and know-how. Italy is one of the world's most exciting and passionate football countries. With a rich history of national team and club success, passionate supporters and a track record of fantastic footballers, we are delighted that City Football Group has extended its presence in Italy. Dario Miri, chairman of Palermo FC, added, we are so very happy to welcome City Football Group to Palermo. We wanted to find the right investor with a deep knowledge of football to help continue to take us forward. We have that in CFG. We agreed on the investment before the end of the season 
So we know we have a partner which is committed to growing Palermo in the right way. I am excited to continue to work alongside CFG. They understand and respect the culture and traditions of our club. We are embarking on a project together, which I know all of our fans will be proud of. What do you think about City Football Group acquiring Palermo as their 12th club? Do you believe CFG is doing this for the good of the club? Or is this another sports washing tool for them? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel.